Do you struggle with balancing assertiveness and femininity in your business role? Are you looking for ways to be both strong and feminine in your professional interactions? Do you want to navigate the business world with confidence while still embracing your femininity? Hi, I'm Mami En, your Mami Negosyo, and if you're nodding along, then you're in the right place because in this video, you'll discover how to balance assertiveness and femininity in business. Is that even possible? Yes, it is. And here are five strategies to help you out. First, redefine strength, especially strength in a woman. Number two, assertiveness with emotional intelligence. Number three, dress for success. Number four, foster inclusive environments. And number five, embrace your unique leadership journey. Now, these strategies are about owning your strength while embracing your femininity and creating a powerful and authentic professional presence. Okay, let's begin with strategy number one, which is to redefine strength. Each one of us has strengths. So start by redefining what strength means to you. Strength in business does not have to conform to traditional masculine standards. Recognizing that qualities like empathy, collaboration, and intuition are also strengths, and that recognizing them is important. So by embracing these qualities, you can develop a leadership style that is both effective and authentic to who you are. So integrate all these qualities into how you lead your team and manage your business accordingly. Let's use the story of my coaching client, Jessa, as an example. During our call, I sensed that Jessa was unsure. She knew she was good at understanding people and being kind, but she did not know how to use these skills as a boss. And this made her feel unsure about how to make her business a great place for others to work. So we talked about how Jessa could use these qualities to be a better boss. And we did some exercises together to help her feel more sure about it. And soon enough, she was leading her team in a way that made everyone feel safe, happy, and excited to work. Great, isn't it? So remember to redefine your strengths. Next is strategy number two, which is assertiveness with emotional intelligence. Being assertive does not mean being mean or hard to talk to, right? It's about saying what you need or think in a clear and kind way while also thinking about how others might feel. It's about striking a balance. Let's look at Sabel's story. Sabel's business is selling plants or plantitanes, and she wanted to be more confident when communicating with her team. Problem was her tendency to hold back her ideas because she did not want to seem bossy. This made her feel unsure about how to lead her employees effectively. And during our coaching sessions, we worked on assertiveness with kindness. Hmm, that's possible, yes. I showed Sabel that she did not have to be pushy to be heard. With this, she practiced expressing her thoughts clearly and respectfully. Sabel also learned to listen carefully to her team's ideas. That's of course very important because as a result, she became a more confident business owner. This made people respect her without her having to question her qualities of being a woman. Being assertive does not have to be a hard thing to do, especially when you do it with kindness and respect. Did you get that? Great. Now let's go to strategy number three, dress for success. Rachel Zoe, or Zoe, a celebrated fashion designer and stylist once said, style is a way to say who you are without having to speak. And so dress in a way that feels authentic and empowering to you. Your attire can be a powerful tool in expressing both your femininity and professionalism. So it does not have to be suits every time. Choose outfits that make you feel confident and comfortable. They should reflect your personal style and your professional role. And you might find Gemma's story inspiring. Gemma just started her travel and tour services. When she attended a travel industry event, she could not help but notice how effortlessly stylish and neat everyone seemed. And this made her feel very self-conscious. This also made her realize that for people to take her seriously, she had to improve how she dressed. But she was not sure how to balance professionalism with her personal style. You see, Gemma loves to wear clothes that are casual and comfortable. And she does not like to wear high-heeled shoes. And so she needed to research different outfit options that would reflect Gemma as a business owner while still allowing her unique personality to shine through. And she asked help from a friend who has a great sense of fashion. 
that's not me, you must have a friend like that, right? So they focus on selecting a look that's comfortable, versatile, and aligned with her brand values. So with her improved sense of style, she was prepared to greet her clients with professionalism and enthusiasm. And yes, it takes a bit of research and seeking advice from others. But it's worth it, right? Even if you had to pay. Now, moving to strategy number four, foster inclusive environments. For this, you need to encourage everyone to feel welcome and valued in your workplace or business network. This means appreciating the unique strengths and leadership styles of each person. So try this. Start open conversations about diversity and inclusivity to make sure everyone's voice is heard. Meet Annie, an owner of a spa business. She reached out to me, feeling very frustrated and very worried about how things were going in her business. And she confided in me that tension among her staff was growing and some of them feeling left out and misunderstood because each one has a different leadership style. Annie feared that if this continued, her spa's atmosphere would suffer and it would affect both the morale and the productivity. And so we strategized on how she could cultivate a more inclusive culture within her business. She then organized open discussions where everyone could share their thoughts and experiences freely. And Annie, by doing that, transformed her spa by recognizing and valuing each team member's unique strengths and leadership styles. Now, this created a supportive environment where everyone felt empowered to lead authentically. And as a result, tension was resolved. Team unity was strengthened and overall morale improved. You see, being a business owner means you also have to make sure that everyone feels valued, even if they are different. And this too is not hard because women are naturally good at empowering others, right? You just have to start with yourself. This brings us to the last one, strategy number five. Embrace your unique leadership journey. The last strategy is about embracing this unique leadership journey that you have as a source of your strength and your growth. You see, your business path is uniquely yours and embracing it fully can be very empowering. So reflect on your experiences, both your successes and the challenges that you went through and learn from all of them. Use these insights to carve out a leadership style that's authentic and just unique to you. Let's use Mara's story as an example for this. Mara and her husband run a general merchandise store. Mara used to work in the human resource department of a company for 10 years before she became a businesswoman. And here's a bit of how our call went. It wasn't easy when I shifted to business instead, Mara said. But being in business with my husband helps a lot. And I nodded. I agreed. I asked her, how did this change your way of leading? And Mara thought for a moment and said, I learned that being real is important, she said. So we kept talking about Mara's journey and she shared stories about how her experiences shape the way she leads. And sharing all this with me, Mara figured out what she's good at and how she can use that to do well in her business. To conclude, balancing assertiveness and femininity in business is about embracing all the aspects of who you are and channeling them into your professional life is the key. And with this, you can manage your business with your unique blend of strength and grace. Remember, Your femininity is a strength, not a weakness. And if you're ready to learn more and to take your business to the next level, remember to subscribe to our newsletter and our free starter kit at mommynegosyo.com and that's mommynegosyo.com for more insights and tips. Thank you for joining me today. This is Mommy and your Mommy Negosyo saying, Be Business Minded, Pinoy! (laughs) 